Oh, it's good to be back. We have an awesome show today. We're talking about the fantasy wild cards, those guys that can be great or could be busts, and we're going to debate them on today's episode. Don't miss a minute, and make sure you subscribe. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Tuesday, May 28th. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Good uh, morning, afternoon, good evening, everyone. Hope you had a, a tremendous Memorial Day. Yeah, that's a, a fun holiday. Yeah. Jason, are you, how are you doing? Welcome back. Uh, it's good to be back. The boys are back in town and uh, we're all together. I'm excited. Are you uh, burgers or dogs on Memorial Day? What's the... <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Not today, Satan. I'm both. Okay. okay. I was going to say you can't say both. <laughs> well, Pick I one. Pick one. If I have to pick? Yeah. Oh, man. Burgers. <laughs> oh. This is the hardest I, I decision like, you've ever made. I, it's, it brings me joy, like how much Jason loves hot dogs. I love Why them. Why do you love them I'm so much? Because they're, they're, they're great. They're, they're so good. Now, a good hot dog. A good hot dog is, is real. I mean, you can get crappy, you know, Circle K dogs. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like a nice, you know, Big jumbo dog with a good crust on it. Are you a ballpark man? What are we? What are we talking about? Probably here? go Hebrew National. Okay, all right. I mean, I, you know, I don't want to exclude any uh, of the brands here. Okay, all are welcome oh. to sponsor. <laughs> I'm a hot dog man. Glad to have you back. Yeah, we are talking fantasy wild cards today. NFL news, some mailbag if we have time, and. Um, yeah, long weekend. Glad to be with you. Four days. Four days until the ultimate hey. draft kit is here. Four days and counting. That was your contribution? <laughs> yeah, that it the, was. Letting us know it that was. time moves. Yeah, did you not know that? No, I, I, I'm now. But you got to count it. Yeah, and that's counting. his point. Yeah, no, uh, so the ultimate draft kit on Saturday this, this uh, year. So make your plans, you know, take care of those things you got to do on Friday. Yes. And then spend the weekend uh, with the UDK. That's what I would do. UltimateDraftKit.com. Four days left to get the pre-order pricing over there. You can follow us over on X at the FF Ballers, at Andy Holloway, at Jason FFL, at FF Hitman. And uh, no quick question today. We're going to jump right into the news. News and notes from around the league. Took care of all the quick question material with the hot dog debate from sure earlier. Sure did. Yeah, it wasn't a debate. <laughs> okay. I I have a weird relationship with hot dogs. <laughs> a lot of people do. That's <laughs> okay. Let's 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 unfold here, man. There's a lot to dig into. I mean, there's really not that much. I just feel like the percentage <laughs> of times that I have. For whatever reason, and I don't know what's—I don't know what's in a hot dog. I'll be honest. No one does. No one does. For what? For some reason, the handful of times in my life that I have had to give my food back to the world, ah, uh, where I've had to yes. vomit. Oh, we're talking up the top. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I—I I know my, you. My give food back. returns to the earth every time. I know <laughs> you give your food back the other direction, Jay. But, but listen. I, I'm just saying, like, of the percentage of times I've vomited in my life, there's a high percentage of them that have been hot dogs for some reason. For some reason. Yeah, we no. can't figure out why. No. Look, there's a reason they what? say you don't want to know how the sausage is made. We're all trying to figure out who did this. Wait, this is not a surprise. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. not a surprise. Have you thrown up some hot dogs? I'm sure I have. I've had a lot of hot dogs. 
You know, okay. but I mean, sometimes I, it's no pain, no gain. It's funny because it, it colors my perception of what I would choose. Like, I actually love hot dogs. I just don't eat them anymore because I don't want to throw up. It's fair. That's fair. And and I think part of it is like they do the movie theater hot dogs. That was one of them. Yeah, that's not. You don't want to do that move. I had a Disneyland hot dog situation once. Oh, they have hot dogs. In I don't know, man. Of course. Yeah. Well, they have the giant the corn, corn dogs. dogs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't, don't Jason take an issue. He's like, I know everywhere well, hot dogs are, well, the, and I will never. The Disneyland corn dogs are. They're fantastic, but that's not a hot dog. Anyways. I was a, I was a small <laughs> child. I don't know if they sold Disney dogs back then or something. I must not have. You've got a bad memory. Doug Peterson said during OTAs, by the way, this is the uh, random news part of the year where we can talk about whether you even care about some of these things, but he said, once again, Doug Peterson did his off-season uh, OTA discussion about leaning on Travis Etienne less during the 2024 campaign in order to keep him healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to make sure Tank Bigsby gets opportunities to go out there and take some of the pounding off of Travis, which last year, 340 opportunities for Travis Etienne, third most among all running backs. Bigsby had 50. 50 total carries had the lowest rush success rate among all running backs. And what's crazy is his uh, reception success rate was – that's not something that's, like, measured, but it's worse because his targets turned into just – what what do, you, what do you call it when, you, when you're when you in uh, volleyball? You bump, then you set. Bump, bump set spike? Yeah, he did the setting on all of his uh, targets. And the spikes were interceptions. That's correct. Yes. No, I – it was a really disappointing year for Tank Bigsby. So my first reaction to this is – most teams want this for their offense. Most teams want the, you know, the the Rams. They don't want um, Kyron to have the workload he had last year. Uh, if you're not Christian McCaffrey, every other team wants balance so that your uh, your running back is fresh and they they are more efficient and they don't get hurt. But Tank Bigsby was the worst running back in football last year. He sucked by that by that measure. And when push comes to shove, I I just don't have a lot of fear of ETN being you know, underutilized to the point of not being a top tier guy. This is just things that get said and they get said every year. And you're a hundred percent right. That of course they want to give him fewer carries. It's wise to do that. Push comes to shove eventually, and you got to have your best players on the field. So it's, it's really a matter of can tank Bigsby take yes. a step forward and develop as a player because he was a good college prospect. I, I like this tape. Day two and then pick. yeah, day two pick has the capital and, and I'm sure they want him to spell ETN more, but also don't be afraid of those things because we've seen it so many times, uh, so many times where high volume can just turn into less efficiency, lower volume. You know, you, you see the very efficient lower volume players and you think, oh, if they get the chance to be high volume, they'll just crush. And then they get the chance, Tony Pollard. And it's like, you you know Lamar Miller you, that it doesn't always work that way so if they if they take some away from ETN next year that doesn't mean that his fantasy production is going away yeah I, I am on the side of I like it's all it is it's all up to tank can he be good enough to get on the field as you we had Doug Peterson up in Philadelphia and there was not workhorse usage I'm trying to quickly go back through through uh through everything in here. It looks like so Miles Sanders year he had 179 uh carries. That seems to be the the highest I can find. I remember having debates back then well, of uh of the Doug Peterson backfield. Yes. But, and whether we felt like there were players that were even capable of being the workhorse. You know, well, it's it's a chicken or egg thing to a degree. Sure, but it's like 5 years in Philadelphia didn't have an, an an ETN type of output from the running back position, and I I don't know I I 267 carries last year 340 opportunities was what I do had. I do believe you mean uh, ETN I'm sorry yes I do believe that they this isn't just talking about like they really want to do this they really will try to do it can they. That's the question, but I think they will try to do it. I think if they wanted to do it, they would have signed a running back. That's my opinion of that yeah, situation. Yeah, I agree. No, I, 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 they are hoping that Tank Bigsby yeah. develops and is better this year. If well, that, that doesn't happen, yeah. then it's same old, same old. 
Testing on Christian Watson's hamstrings revealed an asymmetrical stride. Mm, never want that. That was the cause of his persistent hamstring injury. You want it symmetrical. Yeah. Um, okay. Been hurt a lot. A lot of soft tissue issues. Went to a specialist. Well, that's the hope here. The hope is that they were trying to figure out, like, why, why do you outrun your hamstrings? Why do you do that right. all the time? And, and then, you know, they found the – the asymmetrical. There's a pebble in one of the shoes. This happened to was it Alvin Kamara? Who s someone a couple remember. years ago had this going on, and they were able to. Did uh, it work? Fix the process. To I, fix the yeah, stride. Yeah, I think. You, I think it, how do you? It's basically to run. It's basically. It's not. It's not. You're Practice. you're changing your stride. It's a muscle imbalance between your right and your left leg that are that's the the discrepancy is too large. So I think it's a matter of working out. You know, you don't want to be JK one leg. You want to be JK two legs, yeah. and so. Hopefully, th this is, I don't know, maybe it's nonsense, but I mean, this is scientific, you know, doctoring towards... <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, doctoring. What? You know this when a doctor scientific. does stuff. It sounds like you're doctoring the whole message. <laughs> doctoring is usually, fr like, fraudulent. Yeah. Uh, Just that's, <laughs> okay, that's this. You want to start it over? Uh, th this is actionable work being taken towards okay. um hopefully a healthy season because yes. Christian Watson's biggest knock has obviously been his ability to stay on the field. Matthew Betts came out and you know he just reminds us that the number one predictor of future hamstring injury is past hamstring injury and he's a fan of him working on this but he's still a greater risk compared to other players. Yeah, greater risk, but uh, Jason's overall point thing is something is being done. It's not a well, we hope that he it won't happen again. Give them a little rest. Yeah. No, they're doctoring this thing up, you know? <laughs> Did you find uh, an old quote there, Al? Yeah, about Kamara having some muscle asymmetry in his legs that he worked with a new oh. trainer to get fixed. Yeah, but, but you the, were correct, Jay. Well, sort of. You're saying it didn't work? <laughs> well, I'm just saying, yeah, yeah I mean, it's, <laughs> that's the part where it's like it, the, the tweet from Nick Underhill last offseason was that he didn't have all of his bursts the year before. Got with a new trainer, fixed the asymmetry. Oh wait, this was last year. Yeah. Oh, it didn't work. No, it did. It didn't. <laughs> it slowed um, him down. Yeah. The well, reason he was so fast is because one of his legs was lighter. <laughs> All they did is they didn't beef up the other leg. They just brought <laughs> no. They brought the one it's muscle. So smaller. much easier to just go. <laughs> they atrophied one of the legs yes. down. Yes. Lowest common denominator. You gotta. <laughs> well, this was August sixth last year. Nick Underhill. He looks more explosive, and the Saints have the data to prove it. Well, you know. Okay. Um, so there you go. Uh D'Amico Ryans. I want your I want your reaction. Texans head coach D'Amico Ryan says he thinks of Joe Mixon and Damian Pierce as a one two punch. He has praised Pierce's work ethic this offseason, changed his body, has everything it takes to be a really good back. He's twenty four years old. Mixon is twenty seven, going on twenty eight. This one's harder to believe in. Well, we've seen Pierce be great. We didn't see that with Bigsby before. You know what I mean? When you talk about the desire yeah. to have a one-two punch, Pierce was like visibly incredible yeah, for his entire rookie season. That that is fair. And last and year, and then was, last year, don't uh, watch. It him. was atrocious. Don't watch. But he was hurt. Yeah, I mean, he missed he missed time in the beginning of the year. So maybe things got away from him. Maybe he went a little. Uh, what was Josh Jacobs again? Fat Thor. Maybe, yeah. And they said he changed his body. I'm not I'm not predicting anything special for Damian Pierce, but Joe Mixon is an older running back. Older running backs deal with injuries, and Damian Pierce is a younger running back. So to hear – I always thought D'Amico Ryans really liked Damian Pierce, and I think it really hurt to have him take him off the field last year. And it, so this one, though, like if this one happens where – let me back up. If Travis Etienne's workload does go down, he will still be great for fantasy football. If Joe Mixon – finds himself in a full timeshare, he will be bad for fantasy football. Yeah, I, I agree completely. The hard part is this one seems harder a harder pill for me to swallow because last year, you know, was the first year with D'Amico Ryans with this with the Damian Pierce, and they tried to use him in the beginning, and then they're like, you're not fitting the system. It doesn't work well. You know, and eh, the, that's not true. That's not what happened. Well, what at happened the end was of they, the year, they started to try to use him, he got hurt. He missed a bunch of time. Singletary proved himself. And you're right. At that point, they had made the choice. But it wasn't like well, it was a performance only situation. But he sucked. Up, up until the. Oh, I know. I mean, he, until the I know, injury, but I, he was at three yards. It forced Singletary into, onto the bench, but is all I'm saying. So seven games, and you're 
average over that time is three yards an attempt. Yeah, he was he was that's really an abomination bad. on the field. He was really, really, really bad. And that's averaging 15 carries a game. And then once 16. he came back and was healthy, he was basically not used. I think yeah, he, was, he was trash. He was yeah. trash. I agree yeah. with that. I mean, it, and like you said, it was the first time we've seen what he's doing there. And yet they, they didn't bring Singletary back, obviously. And um, they yep. went out and they traded for Mixon. They signed yep. him to a new extension. I, that the actions of the team are what make me think of this as more coach speak. Like sure. you're going to talk up your players. Oh, it's a great one-two punch. Damien's in the best shape of his life. Blah, 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 <laughs> nonsense. I mean, maybe it's true, but it's not. It's weird. Damien Pierce is weird because year one was different than year two in a very, very big way. Yes. New system, though. I mean, we talked about the, the, the line, right? The line was terrible, but Singletary succeeded over the back half of the year. It's just weird. Last year, I mean, he was one of the biggest misses. Yeah. He was a 4.3 a carry as a rookie on 220 attempts. Yeah. That's that's, that's crazy. Fine. And then Last nothing. year was like, I mean, he's like Tank Bigsby <laughs> for the roster. Lamar Jackson dropped weight in an effort to become more agile. Ooh. Okay. As did Tua. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. What? I don't know. I feel like Tua is... You want him to bulk up? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, when I... You want him to be doing neck yeah, exercises. Yeah, oh, for sure. Dick. For sure neck exercises. I mean, Tua neck still... exercises. Tua still scares me from I a, didn't want to exercise. say it, and you took it. You took the bait. <laughs> Boston. <laughs> if, bro, you think I didn't think of that immediately? <laughs> I bet if you check the tape, you can hear like a hitch in my giddy up as I'm saying neck exercises. Yeah. It's like, oh, that'd be too dumb <laughs> to put those together. I said I tried to say it quietly while you were talking. Too. Neck exercises. <laughs> 40 um, now. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know. I I still worry a little bit about the 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 big injury risk of Tua. You know, I, I mean, is it an injury risk for Lamar to lose weight? Yeah, I'm just saying we've seen like the the. I mean, the Tua, scare on the field of Tua from the the concussions of the head injuries, where it's like, I don't know, I, I want him to bulk up, be strong, be big. I mean, we've we've seen it with Lamar Jackson, we've seen injuries. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, uh, is there any concern with, like, are you excited or not excited about the news? He played twelve games in twenty twenty one, twelve games in twenty twenty two, sixteen last year. I'm. You don't care. I, I don't care. All right, that's part of the off season, figuring out what you don't care about um source okay i just wanted one note for lamar he needs 851 you know, rushing yards to break the career qb rushing that's record. not the note i'm looking at you see oh. the, you see the little, no you see the source for the final bit of news here somebody put something oh in. yes reports uh from camp are that the fantasy footballers could also drop weight this summer oh man it's a big it's in the range the, of outcomes the word could is doing some real heavy lifting in it's that like, sentence it's like Kyle. a wild card this, this is the wild yeah. card episode and listen the opportunity is there i right? mean we, we've yeah. got great opportunity we have, we have weight to lose yes <laughs> there's always opportunity to lose it but most likely you know we've got Coach a, speak we've got a de <laughs> we've got a decade of history to fall back on here and make our bets so are you a better podcaster if you cut weight in the off season, more agile with your words? I don't think so, man. You get a, that big boy voice. You know what I mean? <laughs> Bulk up. Get Wait, that, get that neck thick. We've, we've talked about the fact, Jason, that your voice has changed over the years. Yeah, I've changed. <laughs> so do you want me to Wait be better for audio or Wait better a for minute. video? Which, which one? Just tell me what you want, video <laughs> or audio. This Wait, is You don't want me to say video? <laughs> no, I don't. I want you to say audio. <laughs> that is not a joke at all no. we we just heard one of the like the the early episodes of the show and jason's voice Hi guys. jason's <laughs> voice was noticeably higher yeah. yes yeah and then i started bulk season yeah. for a decade and listen and to you this got sultry. a man voice yeah yeah i did yeah i do you can't is, lose weight no no <laughs> chance man i had chipotle no. for lunch don't you worry about it <laughs> oh my gosh we i would i hadn't connected those i know <laughs> Just wait to see how low I can get my voice, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be Barry White by the time we retire. All right, we're going to take a break. Come back with some wild card players.
All right, let's jump in. No, I'm saying, no, the brakes. Guys, why are the brakes working? Because I cut the brakes. Wild card. Wild card. Yeah. (laughs) We have selected uh, two players each that are tough to rank, wide range of outcomes. Players that we could see making a really big impact, uh, positively or negatively, in fantasy football, depending on how things go. So I'm going to begin with George Pickens of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm, I like it. I love it. Okay. I want I'm, some more of it. Just saying, I've the I. Your emotions I'm, are better. I'm, no, I'm very in on Pickens right now. George Pickens is uh well. It's very interesting because there's hype around several of the other year three players, right? Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson. Yeah. And, um, well, let's do this. Oh, my. I want to play the game. Because I want the world to awaken a little bit. To okay. George Pickens, and so we'll do the. Wait, so you're so you're thinking? Are you more bullish? Uh, we're gonna find out. Okay, man. we're gonna find out because I am more bearish. So but yeah, this I, is a perfect wild card because I I could see both, but I convinced me here. Play game. Well, look uh, through two years. Let's look at George Pickens and Chris Olave. Those other guys, okay. Chris Olave, specifically. Oh man. <laughs> so <laughs> so this is this game is Pickens versus Olave. Yeah. This brought Kyle so much pain. I you know, I think that Kyle and Betsy are pretty in on George Pickens. Okay. All right, let's go. Let's All right. Uh let's go receptions. More Who has more? Yeah. Who's got more? Olave. Yeah. Yeah, by a lot. Chris Olave. Yeah, he's okay. 159 to 115. Yards per reception. Oh, we're going per numbers. I'm going to switch yeah. over. No, we're do, we're going all over the place. Okay, I'll but go Pickens. Per, I'll go Pickens. Uh, Pickens is at 16.9. Olave's at 13.6. Yeah. Total receiving yards. 16.9 times 115. <laughs> oh, yeah, you could do that, couldn't you? <laughs> How is it? I'm going to uh, say Olave. Uh, it's very close. Olave hasn't beat. 21.65 to 1941. Receiving, okay, touch, receiving touchdowns over two years. Oh, man. That might be. Yeah, I'm going to go Pickens. Pickens. They're tied at nine. Oh. Top 12 weeks. Pickens. Pickens. Pickens, seven. Olave, five. 20-plus yard receptions at the NFL level. Pickens. Yeah. 27 for Pickens, 15 for Olave. So those numbers are. That game was easy. They're fairly <laughs> close. Did you get 100? <laughs> I got 100. <laughs> they're fairly close. And here's the biggest change that you saw in George Pickens' game. In 2022, his rookie season, you were like, this is a deep play guy. And you were kind of right. 35% of his routes were deep routes. Um, and he was making big plays down the field. Uh, and that's kind of what you thought of him as, a jump ball type of player. Last year, it was a big difference. He had 39% of his routes were intermediate routes and another 36% were short routes. So you're talking about... Eighty percent of his routes were short or intermediate. He had twenty-one percent deep routes. So this was not the same player that you saw as a rookie. In fact, he had one more intermediate route. This is crazy to me in twenty twenty-three than Garrett Wilson had. And you think about what Garrett Wilson was running in reception. that offense. Um, yeah, sorry, inter- intermediate reception. Yes. So he had improved across the board in terms of the types of routes he can run. You lose Deontay Johnson. He's uh, a go-to, and, and the team, you know, it says something to me that the team was willing to go in with what we view as a thin wide receiver room. I mean, you pick up Roman Wilson, a rookie. You don't bring him in to depend on him on day one. And then Pat Frymuth has dealt with injuries. He's going to be a part of the, like, p- this is Pickens' wide receiver room. Yeah, we got, uh, what, Van Jefferson, currently the other projected this is starter. Pickens' wide like receiver room. Like I said, room. yeah, I mean, and to put up numbers that, You look at what Olave, there's a lot of expectation last year and then this year for Olave to break out. Do do you like do you guys love Derek Carr? No. 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 Okay. So like it's not like the quarterback is the fundamental reason we're in love with Chris Olave. 
It's the talent. And we don't love Russell Wilson. But he's an upgrade on what they had last year. And George Pickens had his moments and ran a lot more routes. And so I think it's very interesting when you look at this season. I mean, he's the, he's the wide receiver 26. He was very inconsistent with no quarterback play. But I think he could take a step forward this year, and the value you're going to get on Pickens, it's a lot better than what you would get on Olave. He had 1,140 yards, which I think would surprise it does, uh, yeah. a, a lot of people. The, the, the issue here is you still – kind of expect inconsistency if if for no other reason than Russell Wilson this is not a quarterback you know solution this is this is hopefully an upgrade but we're certainly not even sure about that we had success with Cortland Sutton last year with Russell Wilson eh, he, not really I mean I know what you're saying he had 10 touchdowns which is I mean that's a massive number but Sutton, where did he finish with 10 touchdowns? Was he even a top 24? I don't think so. 35. Yeah. He was wide receiver 35. Yeah, we'll see what it's like without Deontay Johnson. My point isn't to necessarily argue for George Pickens, but bring up both sides of the equation. I mean, obviously the Wilson coming in, um, dependency on Pickens is going to be interesting. How run heavy will they be with Arthur Smith? They should be in two in two wide receiver sets more often, which is something that Pickens has been good at. But, you know... We've only seen him play, I think, four games without Deontay Johnson. He was great, but we'll find out this year. I think Pickens is a a huge gamble with really high upside for fantasy players. No, and I like it where he's going in drafts right now. Is like I think it's it, you're you're in a sweet spot for risk reward. Where where's he going right now? So Do you have sixth, it up sixth round. Yeah, it looks like. Uh, Let so me see in, if I can pull it up on here. sleeper going about the middle of the fifth and underdog towards the back of the ninth. But I mean, so no, back of the fourth or fourth, yeah, yeah four oh nine, which speaks to the his perception. And it's like big he's, play. He's right around, you know, Zay Flowers, T. Higgins, Amari Cooper, Keenan Allen, like Christian you, Kirk. You These named, are the, there's some safer players there, but they're not gonna. I don't think they have the same ceiling as Pickens this year. Cooper's the only one that you named is that's the primary target. Right of those other names. Well, f yeah, like Flowers, Pickens should be the one. Flowers is the wide receiver one, but he may not be the number one target. Right, you would look at Andrews. Andrews, yeah. yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna hop in here with a player that um, it terrifies me. Wild card. This <laughs> is wild card. Um, terrifies me to be wrong because I can. I'm pretty out, um, but I can easily see the clear cut path for the most glorious fantasy season. So I'm going to talk about both sides of the coin of Josh Jacobs, new running back for the green Bay Packers. He has, uh, you know, he has to be great because you're taking him as an RB one right now. Uh, he can't just be good. He needs to be great. Here's the pros. The green Bay offense is the biggest pro overall. They're sixth in yards per play, eighth in points per game, second in red zone plays per game. And that's really, really, really where, Josh Jacobs could thrive because last year, the Packers, they had four total rushing touchdowns on 368 total attempts. Uh, Dylan and Jones had two apiece. That is so bad. With backfields with more than 350 attempts, that's the fewest rushing touchdowns since 2016. So they let Aaron Jones walk. They bring in Josh Jacobs, a guy who just the year before last led the entire league in rushing. So it's like this is – he's coming into a situation where they have opportunity to score touchdowns. They're on a great offense. We've seen Aaron Jones for years be successful here. This could easily be a top five running back this season in right. fantasy football, and I've seen some people who are drafting him like that, that are drafting him essentially very confident that he is going to be great. I'm on the other side. I'm a little scared because – you know, efficiency-wise, he might have either had a bad season or be trending to the new normal. Last year was terrible. His yards per carry were 56th out of 69 running backs. His forced missed tackle rate was 51st out of 69. His explosive rush rate was 54th out of 69. Also, he's coming into year uh, years six and seven are the largest 
percentage of fantasy point declines for running backs. So he's already – he's at that point. He's not at the age cliff, but he's at the season where you see a huge decline coming off super inefficient running where he didn't look good. And then you go, well, he was in a bad situation. You know, he's playing for the Raiders, bad team, bad offensive line. Well, the last four weeks, you had Zamir Wright, White running 4.7 a carry, looked just fine. So they gave him a contract, but it's a one-year contract. They go out and they sign or they draft Marshawn Lloyd with a day two draft capital. And so if he is ineffective, inefficient, he'll be in a timeshare. I don't think he's just going to get, you know, thrown to the curb, but he'll be in potentially point, a three-way timeshare now. Point of clarity, I know what you meant, but for those listening, it was a four-year deal that he signed with the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, it's yeah. not a one-year deal. No, no, You no. said he signed a one-year contract. I said that with my yeah. words? You with did, your yes. Incredible. Yes. He, yes, he signed a four-year contract where it's all front-loaded, the guaranteed money, the dead cap. Essentially, if he, if he stinks this season, they'll cut him and move on. And so they have their out. It's a brilliant. He's a pretty big cap hit next year. It's it it's still movable. It's it's where you're able to get out. Um, so I, I'm just worried that Josh Jacobs is going to be in a timeshare. You you've seen Lafleur talk about well, like when he drafted uh, Marshawn Lloyd, he was talking about how he uses multiple backs. He's always used multiple backs. He believes in a multiple back system, and so we've seen Aaron Jones with success in it. But we've also seen Aaron Jones not get a lot of volume. If Josh Jacobs does not get a lot of volume and is not – I mean, Aaron Jones is as efficient as any running back we've seen in the last decade. That's not really been Josh Jacobs' game is pure efficiency, certainly not this last year. What makes him a wild card to me is the fact that you have this year of taking over the league that predated it. Like, Josh Jacobs was right. the best running back, 1,653 yards – the year before the struggle year, which is crazy. Like, if you just took that year out of his career arc, you'd say, well, he he really wasn't that different than what he had been. Four a carry, 3.9 a carry the previous two years. But you had this one year where he jumped up to, you know, he had the big plays, right, like the Seattle game and these huge long runs, 86-yard touchdowns, and he's 4.9 a carry. And, yeah. And, and was it – was that year the outlier? I mean, it seems like it right now. Yeah, it does. So – um, if you draft him, I hope that was the outlier. I mean, we called – we Mike called him Fat Thor going in because, you know, holding out deep into camp, maybe that was the issue. And well, I, that, sorry. Go ahead. I'm just saying, if if that was the cause of the inefficiency and, you know, he wasn't in the, the shape he was used to being in, I, I don't necessarily buy that. I don't think he was sitting at home doing nothing. You know, I, I think he was still working out, trying to stay in shape. But Yeah, a lot of tumult that year. Uh, right now where he's going in drafts, He's going to be an option for people that draft one of the top wide receivers. Because if you end up Lamb, Hill, Chase, Jefferson, Brown, who are, by the way, ADP two through six right now, five wideouts, when your turn comes back around at that, um, was it, two, three turn, mm -hmm. that's about where Jacobs is going. Mm -hmm. So either you took McCaffrey and he's your – your RB two there, or you took a wide out potentially, and you're coming back around and deciding if you want to go with Jacobs as your RB one, which would make him it's a wild card RB one because there's potential great upside, and there's also that stink from last yeah, year that is emanating. It's massive risk for his ADP. All right, the first guy I want to talk about: Could we be back? I do not know yet. But it is Mr. Antonio Gibson, new running back for the New England Patriots, who currently is a complete afterthought in drafts. I am seeing right now an ADP of RB50 on sleeper and RB51 on underdog. So this player is not being sought after at all. But you know, here's kind of both sides of the case. He turns 26. Entering year five, you know, kind of a, a similar stuff with Josh Jacobs. So he's not, he hasn't aged out just yet. He is actually younger than, uh, th than the incumbent in under, uh, Ramondre Stevenson. So the age between the two of them, you can't really argue it. And it was a, th a three year deal 
five million guaranteed for Antonio Gibson. That's not a ton of cash, but it was also one of those. If you're trying to read the tea leaves of the actions, it was immediate. The Patriots went and signed him or got an agreement from him right off of the in the tampering period. And the pros are the the offensive system we are told that's going to be launched in New England. You know the Alex Van Pelt Cleveland system. So it's a lot of outside zone runs where Antonio Gibson has far more experience with that as the rushing scheme than than Ramondre Stevenson. And that stuff does matter. There's there's some running backs that they excel in power schemes and man, and then there's some guys who are just they're great in zone. So Gibson, he might have an upper hand there between the competition of, oh, I already know how to do this. And then on top of that, while Antonio Gibson for – Fantasy football last year, it was it really just a couple spot weeks here or there uh, when he's filling in. But in terms of efficiency, second in yards created per touch, fourth in yards per touch, sixth in fantasy points per opportunity, ninth in PFF's elusive rating. Uh, rating. Like he still had juice on the field. He just he was he had lost his spot as the starter. And where where I've started to be thinking more and more lately is. Could Antonio Gibson actually just take the job? Take the job from Ramondre Stevenson. And I think there is a world that exists. He's Antonio Gibson is a far more electric pass catcher. Uh for his career, you know, he's at seven point two yards per catch. And over the past couple of years, Ramondre is just barely over six. So Antonio is better there. Last year was atrocious on the ground for Ramondre Stevenson. Let me ask the question. Please I, do. Do you think that Mike is the only one that thinks that in this? I game? think that Mike is the only one. If you're including uh, Kyle's on the line, Brooks is here, uh, the Deucers are here. I would hope that Mike is the only one. I am definitely not going to be the only one. Oh, because of Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle is in on this. Yeah, dude. RB when you said back, I was trying to. When you said he might be back, I was like, what do you mean? I Back mean, to rookie what? year. Rookie no, 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 year no, no, no. I'm not saying. I'm not. It saying, is crazy to think he had 257 rush attempts as a sophomore. I'm not but, saying top 12 running back, but I'm saying a guy who's being drafted in the 50s. Who, in my opinion, this is an ambiguous backfield. That's where he's being drafted. Yeah, RB 50. Oh, okay. You said the 50s. I thought you. Meant yeah, like yeah. The 50, 50 of his position. Like this is a guy who's not even really being drafted, and so th that's like that's the the positive case for him. Of course, the the negative is. Right now, the New England Patriots are the favorite to be the worst. And over the last six years, the team with the worst record, their running back fantasy points are 30th, 31st, 31st. Like it's, this feels like a, another way of insulting Ramondre, though. Like You don't could, like what Ramondre brings to the table. I, I thought Ramondre was, was terrible last year. And the, the fact that they immediately went out and got Antonio Gibson, the fact that he is a better pass catcher, more dynamic, can make things happen should like sometimes you need a, a sometimes your your offense works sometimes you need a player and you say please go do something for me and Antonio Dib Gibson can do that where Ramondre can't so I'm saying over the course of the year there are it, a bunch of running backs that are being drafted that probably Gibson should go ahead of as flyers like Chase Brown and Gibson right Brown's going to go in the eleventh round. Gibson's probably undrafted, right? So Wait, which one are you to. saying you would rather have? I'd rather have Gib. I, no, I'm just saying that like Gibson is equal in my mind, in terms of upside, to Chase Brown. Chase Brown does nothing. He's not. He can't pass protect. He can't. He, he's barely involved in the offense. Like, to me, that's a that's a misprice. Yeah, that, like, that's that's a huge part of the the argument is the ADP because Jay, you you're over here. I can your vibes mm -hmm. and your words are. I'm out. You are. O U T on yeah, Antonio Gibson. That is great. And yet, compared to his ADP, you are soups in. Well, yes and no. I mean, it, it's kind of like what what Andy's saying. When you're drafting someone, it you know, as, at running back fifty, I'm looking for something that can really explode and become a high end. You know, some rookie backup that just needs an injury ahead of him, and he can he could go. I I presume that the New England Patriots offense is going to be bad. Yeah. I also think that Antonio Gibson was immediately gone after in free agency because this is replacing Zeke, not Ramondre. This is you know, Dron Mayo is part of this team. Ramondre was the guy. This isn't a new. I mean, it's a new coaching staff, but it's not like an entirely new 
regime that that was not part of the human beings there. I, so I'm, I'm shocked that you want to have this conversation, Mike. I really am. I, I feel like just it might have been better for your emotional health <laughs> to just <laughs> set him out to sea. You know what I mean? Uh, he's been there. He's been on a life raft, just chilling out in the ocean. And Push him back out. Maybe just, we will. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you're on the boat and you're like, you have a choice. You'll be like, come on, I'll save you. Uh -huh. Or next, next man gets him. I would pull him in so that my arrow that is on fire could could hit the, the oh raft. you're going viking i'm just but i'm so you straight two, down i'm not like I, aiming i'm trying this thing to out like the water i just don't think i think gibson is a, a low odds waiver wire guy that if ramondre gets hurt yeah that's that's how i see so, it as well. um, but the range of i mean that's the thing we're talking about wild yeah. cards here we're talking about we're not talking about players who have a clear and obvious past path to success or are obviously going to suck these are guys where it's like yeah there is a very large range of outcomes but i think for him to hit his higher end range of outcomes it has to either be an injury i see it as an injury to ramondre or he has to completely overtake him become the guy and, and make ramondre pretty irrelevant and i don't see i don't see that one happening uh, that's where it's like uh, if that's where i'm leaving the door open for that yeah all right uh quick break back with three more All right, I, I feel really guilty taking this second My wild guy. card option because, yeah, he's Jason's dude. He's always been Jason's dude. Thank you. He's loved him from, what, high school, college, uh, through the NFL. Grade school. Zach Moss. <laughs> I mean, Jason's – My dude. Jason's guy, Zach Moss, instantly replaces Joe Mixon in the Cincinnati offense, was a usage monster when Jonathan Taylor wasn't available. It was, a, it was really fun on the show. Because we'd come here every week, and Zach Moss had done more stuff. Yeah. And it was like, how is this happening? Um, 22 Ster opportunities a game. <laughs> did you say steroids? They what? Did. I would never have said steroids. Uh, for your allegations, they did. They never caught him. So maybe That's he's true. just really good at that. It was impressive what he, he was able to do. And you talk about, you know. You have to imagine he was tested, too. Of course he <laughs> was. They all get tested. Yeah, but some guys, you go. Wait a minute. Wait yeah, a minute. We, we got to test that dude. Well, you would have tested. Oh, I would have yeah. tested him every day. I mean, I would have watched. Look at the offseason for Cincinnati and the wild card that Zach Moss is. I don't have him ranked super high, but I do see a range of outcomes for him that is pretty good. I mean, Joe Mixon, while looking bad, produced great fantasy numbers in Cincinnati for the last two years. By great, do you mean like he was the running back five last year? I do mean that. Yeah, because that's absurd, but it's true. And and so Zach Moss is a direct one-to-one -one replacement for Joe Mixon. I just brought up Chase Brown. He's never used in passing situations. He was asked to pass block eight times. Zach Moss can do that. He can catch the football. Uh, they basically identified a cheaper Joe Mixon that they could bring in that doesn't have the pedigree and the the attention, but produced. I mean, he was a good producer in Indianapolis when he had an opportunity to do it. And they run out of the shotgun a ton. This is one of the things Kyle was looking up. But when you took at when you look at the running back leaders in rushing yardage in shotgun, Zach Moss was number three last year. So they obviously saw a fit. Like that that is one thing that we identified in the offseason. They basically said, All right, we're done with Joe Mixon. He's vacating 257 carries. So much opportunity. 64 targets. And we're going to draft nobody. We're not going to draft anybody. We're just going to bring in Zach Moss, pay him not a lot, have him one-to-one -one replace Joe Mixon, run a bunch of shotgun, let Joe Burrow be our offense, and Zach Moss will be out there all the time. And so, you know, I think it's going to be one of those things that comes down to how often he gets into the end zone and how much he's used in the passing game. But I think he's a huge wild card, just like Zamir White is. Like, he's not on our – um, Yeah, he could be on this show. He could easily be on this show. But those two guys are the – they're a match made in heaven. I hate <laughs> how in I am on Zach Moss right now. <laughs> like it bothers you? Yeah. Well, it, welcome aboard, brother. Be, because – You have him just outside your yes, just, RB1 territory. Yeah, I and look, that ranking, I'm sure, will fluctuate over the offseason. We have him RB20 as a group. But it's just my – my overall thoughts on the Bengals' backfield, the, like the previous one, of I don't think that Joe Mixon is a 
great running back. I think he's fine. I think he is a, just an average running back. And so you put – then the, the argument of talent that Zach Moss has to replicate, to, to me, the barrier of entries, just be an average running back and you will be good for fantasy football on the Bengals. And they liked cause, those because they used Samaji P. Ryan all those years. Yeah, they sure did. And I don't – I know there's – Chase Brown has his has his hive. I do, I just that I don't I don't think he's anything more than a a, a role player who will like he'll get a couple receptions a game and and impact things. But but looking at the workload, I don't see how it's not what Joe Mixon had. Cut a couple percentage points off of that and just give it to Zach Moss. Among all running backs with sixty plus pass blocks. Zach Moss was the number one dude in efficiency. Yeah, dude, you why think even, they want to keep Joe Burrow upright? Why even put Brown on the field in third down? Just keep Zach Moss. No, out there. Travion Williams played ahead of, of Brown on third down last year. So this is Zach Moss's backfield. So look, it J could all collapse. Like the Zach Moss prophecies yes. that Jason held so dear to his heart before last year could all return to form. Most carries inside the ten last year amongst running backs, Joe Mixon. Yeah, usually when you bet on those mid-round running backs yes. who are getting a lot of opportunity handed to them, but they have not been successful, they have not been the guy, they've been average to below average running backs for their career, those are bad bets. That's that that's, that's, that's dead chock zone. full of the running back dead zone. Like when Peyton Barber was that? Yeah. Yeah, or Alexander Al Madison, Al Madison. Madison last year. So this is a scary pick, the range of outcomes. You could see how it doesn't work, but at the same time, those players are often not on great offenses. Um, and this is an offense that you would expect with Joe Burrow there should be very good. I, I'm i just so it's happy tough. to stay in on Zach Moss. As you always have been. Yeah. All right. Who, who's, uh, who's next? Jason's up. Jason. Uh, all right. My final wild card pick is a man who has barely done anything in his two years in the NFL. But his opportunity, his talent, his pedigree should be excellent. It is Jamison Williams, wide receiver for the Detroit Lions. Jamison Williams was my number two wide receiver in his draft class pre-NFL draft. His talent that he showed in Alabama was unbelievable. There's a reason why he was drafted as a first-round pick. His speed is world-class. It's, you know, one of the top fastest wide receivers currently in the NFL. He's playing on a high powered offense. They lost Josh Reynolds, the de facto wide receiver two from last year. They did not replace him. They did not draft anybody to replace him. The the verbiage on Jamison Williams has been better and better. The coach speak over Jamison Williams career. Kyle's been tweeting this out for years. It's so funny. They have bad mouthed him. They have said positive quotes that are like laughably like backhand. negative yeah backhanded compliments um however the recent quotes and this is what's nice the trajectory of you know that this coaching staff will talk crap about Jameson Williams we've seen him do it we've seen him say well some guys just take longer you know he's you know he's got to prove himself he's got to be reliable blah 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 well now they're saying that he is a man on a mission and so that's what you want to hear. You want to hear that he's just completely motivated, working his tail off, and he's got the opportunity ahead of him. He he should be pretty much a full time wide receiver for the Detroit Lions. Like we have had seasons of Khalif Raymond relevance, of Josh Reynolds relevance, like with the talent that we saw coming into the league. This should be Jamison Williams' year. Absolutely and should, this, and this <laughs> should it really should like. Like this like should not be something. Could, it should. Yes, this should be something that later on, when people didn't draft him, we're all looking at, and we say, "Yeah, that was obvious." Yeah, it was but, obvious, but nobody did the it. first round wide receiver with exceptional speed for a team that needs a deep threat, who's now on the field all the time, should. Well, rock. I mean, he made big plays behind the line of scrimmage too. Yeah, but, but, but uh, yeah. The, here's the other side of the coin. It's not pretty. Through two years. He's done virtually nothing. Here is a list of first-round wide receivers who have never had a 14-point fantasy game through two years. Uh-oh. Okay? Just buckle up. Buckle uh -oh. up. Here's a list. <laughs> <laughs> There's six of them. Uh-oh. Jameson Williams is one. TBD. We'll say TBD. 
John Ross, Laquan Treadwell, Philip Dorsett, Nelson Aguilar, and Kevin White. Just a boop, 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 barf. That, that is a list of busts of wide receivers who never became a first round yeah payoff so it's like i don't blame anyone for <laughs> bypassing jameson williams and saying look i've seen him not get it Dude, done on the is, nfl field for two years so bad the list is so bad and and nelson also, aguilar is the highlight yeah oh yeah i mean nelson <laughs> yeah, he still plays super he shows that chart to other people <laughs> as like look how much the biggest look what i accomplished look what i overcame <laughs> the biggest problem that i have is that we say okay the opportunity is here for james williams the problem is the opportunity has been here for Jameson Williams. We just talked about it. Josh Reynolds left. The opportunity was just beat Josh Reynolds. Just be better than Josh Reynolds. He couldn't do it. Also, he was on the field. When he played, he was on the field for more than 50% of the snaps already. And he did jack squat. So it's like, okay, he's – it's not – it can't just be opportunity. You can't just say, well, now if he plays 77 or 85% of the snaps, he's going to be great for fantasy. No, he's got to take a step forward as well because he hasn't been good enough that's that's a little of the like quentin johnston had opportunity and snaps exactly like to the 70 and 80 to 90 percent and did nothing for fantasy so yeah that is um and jameson williams risky business is let's say he accomplishes the goal here i want to make sure i get the quote right because right before the nfl combine uh yeah coach campbell talking about jameson williams he's gonna push to be a full-time starter so that, that's that's where we were before if, the draft. If you're Jared Goff, who do you want to throw to? You want to throw to Amon Ross St. Brown or Jameson Williams? That was going to be the point of this guy who's going to push to be a starter. Ne should he accomplish that lofty goal of a first-round wide receiver just being a starter, He's you have Jameer Gibbs, I'd rather Amon throw Ra, to rather and, throw to him, and Sam Laporta. Yeah, and, and that's the truth. Now, luckily, Jameson Williams can score from 80, yeah, yards, he can. 80 yards out. Yes. But, but no, that is um, – that's what makes him so wild. Talking through this, I think I'm out. <laughs> like I thought I was I more you pro. I out. thought I was pro. You're the highest Jameson ranker Williams. right now. Well, that's what I'm saying. I thought I I really thought it could happen. Yeah, but but, uh, but th those realities though about being the starter, they were true for you know Josh Reynolds, and he had games. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. they, they were true. It, it's not that those other like there's a lot to go around in Detroit. That's all Dude, I'm saying. I am. I've been out on Jamison Williams for the last two years. So nice for, being in, though. The last two years. So that's felt nice, warm, and comfy. But where he's – wide receiver 49 on sleeper, 48 on underdog. What, what, what round is that? Do you know? Tenth round. Man, double what could go, double what could go wrong? Uh, okay, I will say this. I'm Beckett. Because, yeah, see, <laughs> because here's yes. the thing. When you're in the double-digit rounds, you're looking for upside. You're looking for someone who can become elite and – there's not a lot of people that are should be a full time starter with crazy speed on a great offense in the tenth round. Mike, you got to finish this up. Another wild card. Speaking of uh, players going late in the draft and having no idea what to do with them, Gus Edwards of the Los Angeles Chargers, the Gus Bus. I'm I'm looking. There it is. Thank you. I was speaking in a cadence. No, I know that you would were. Allow and I don't. I don't know where it is. The man. drop. I got to, no idea. To happen. Uh, are you hitting it again? Or are you still looking? I'm still looking. <laughs> oh, yeah. So here's the. <laughs> what just happened? I just. I just saw the booty scoop. Okay, you wanted to. Wanted to I wanted to bring it back for a second. So. On the positive side for Gus Edwards, are right now he's the starting running back for the Los Angeles Chargers. It's a good starting point. Yeah, he has he has a starting job. He is playing for an offensive coordinator who he has played many years for in the past. Was productive in those years. He was not the starter. He was the backup. Uh, we're talking about Greg Roman, aka Giro, who has such a, a bad nickname. It's not ours. It just no. I know. Remember everyone that we didn't do that. Jhar. But we're gonna, did it. No, that's Hard Dog. We I did know, that one. I know. We yeah, did that's a hard good one. Yeah, that's a great one. Hard Dog's good. So the the past for Giro and his offenses, they run the ball 
so, so much, and their the pass attempts are frequently dead last or second to last in the league. Like, volume should be there. And then talk about success. The rushing touchdown output for Greg Roman's uh, running back rooms. We're talking a 10-year sample size, an average of nearly 14 rushing touchdowns per year. That's a lot of opportunity for scoring for, for Gus Edwards. Now, the bad side, uh, you may have heard us talking about Gus Edwards on this podcast for a long time because he's 29 years old, entering year seven. His deal is – it's a two-year, basically $3 million uh, guaranteed. So this is a salary of nothing. Bro, yeah. I remember – You want to jump in? Just for a second because I remember – you mentioning his age reminded me that I remember trading James Robinson <laughs> in our dynasty league. Oh yeah, the, for he, Gus Edwards. So excited for the opportunity, and then Gus tore his ACL in yeah. camp. Yeah, that was. But uh, that was three years ago now. It's he's been in the league a long time. Last year, he's still with with rushing touchdowns from week seven through eleven. He was the overall running back one. In fantasy football, he's when trying he, to be most when he went on an absolute tear, and he had eight rushing touchdowns in that span. But he's twenty nine. Like this, all data says this should not work because Gus Edwards isn't an Adrian Peterson, a prolific first ballot Hall of Fame superstar, where you're where you can accept that at the age of twenty nine. Like Christian McCaffrey at twenty nine, will say, yeah, that's fine. And yet these two guys who want to run the football. They didn't go out and sign Zach Moss. Correct. They didn't go out and sign no, Josh Jacobs. No, even they didn't make a trade for a young guy. Even worse, even worse, their backup plan was they brought in JK two legs, who's back down to JK one leg, and then they signed. Then they drafted a rookie in the sixth round of Kamani Vidal Sassoon. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm not gonna leave you out, Jay. And it. So the running back room says, "Who's overtaking Gus Edwards here?" For especially goal line work, but third downs it'll be a nothing for Gus Edwards. So the wild card nature of Gus is he's being people aren't hot and bothered for Gus Edwards, and yet he's a starting running back for a team that has an offensive system that has shown year after year after year that they have success running the ball. But I don't even know if I want him. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's the definition of a wild card right there. Man, are you in on the Gus bus, Jason? Uh, it, it's going to be buy a, a ticket. It's going to be a draft day value and, and whether he fits my team. I don't feel like I will be able to bank on consistency enough for him. I think he'll be primarily a goal line guy. He's never been a guy that catches the ball a ton. And he was someone that was known for his hyper efficiency. You know, when you look at yeah. once you've had several hundred carries in your career, he was up near the was league fires. leaders. He was always over five a carry this last year, you know, 4.1 granted when you know, half your carries you give you one yard to the goal line. Yeah, uh, it's not that, that bad. He might. They must have seen something in him. Well, I mean, I, he he was with this system, right? He was with G Row in Baltimore. So, but he they, is, is not going to catch passes. No, no. he's not going to catch passes. So it's going to be a touchdown. I think he has ten touchdowns, which is awesome. You tell me a fantasy running back gets ten. I would touchdowns, be in. Yeah, I'm in. That. You should be in. But I also think he does so little outside of that. That in the games where you don't get a touchdown, you're going to be unhappy. So it's going to be inconsistent. He should be a flex option to me. But he's like, I mean, if, if his ADP holds, he's a zero running back target. And it it just is like, should he be that? Should he be his, more? All right, Kyle sharing this stat. His finish last year at RB20 is the fourth worst among 80 running backs that have ever hit 13-plus rushing touchdowns. Yeah, that makes sense. So to your point, Yeah, Jason. more of the same. All right. I think we did it. The wild cards episode is wild over. Wild card! Thank you. Thank you, Jason. You're welcome. We'll let Jason go have a hot dog. <laughs> Deepen his voice a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you can head over to ultimatedraftkit.com. Can you write those off as like a tax expense for oh, your job? Oh, yeah. Now I can. <laughs> you just oh my wait gosh. to see how many hot dogs <laughs> I can. Your tax guy is like 30 cases of hot dogs? <laughs> no, it was voice lessons. <laughs> it's the same difference. Um, ultimatedraftkit.com right now four days left comes out on Saturday go get it until next time Andy, Mike, and Jason the fantasy footballer saying goodbye goodbye
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.